Quiet on the set. <laughs>
uh, Mike and Ed himself finished it up by knocking some of the shrinks down and, and then expanding it a little bit and then wheeling it smooth. And I, I teach how to do the really nice surface quality so that the, the panel is, is as flawless as you can possibly get it. And then there's the secondary operations of tipping this flange for this is the headlight uh, 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 mount point there. And this is going to be the peak, this peak right here. And this, this has been tipped, but we've got to change the angle just a little bit. It needs to be refined. And then this is the wheel opening arch. And this is all done with a tipping wheel. A lot of people say, oh, well, I could do that on my pull max with a, with a set of uh, dies. But the problem with the pull max is they're all parallel dies. And this isn't parallel. So that's th what happens when you do it with a tipping wheel. You have that freedom of making a non-parallel a uh, little enhancement like that, not, not a problem. So <clears throat> this has to be adjusted a little bit, a little bit of shrinking. And then what will happen with that weld index mark, this has been welded together already here. Then that's going to get welded onto here. And you can see it doesn't match up yet because this needs to be shrunk and that will even up those radiuses and that is going to get, and then you have the whole fender almost right there. And uh, this back section was made by Mike, one of the guys, from, not Mike, uh, that was made by Joe, for one of the uh, sons from Ohio. Mike was the father, and uh, he did a beautiful job on it too. A lot of tipping wheel uh, stuff. And then there's a nice little roll here where it goes into the cockpit. All right, so there's Rob's panel. That's the flexible shape pattern he made. And uh, this is going to have a peak put on it yet. We've got the the uh, wheel opening flare in and the flange underneath and then this is another little feature it's uh, this cutout here and we, we basically pounded this in by hand from the backside with a caulking tool and now that has to be all uh, planished out nicely again you can't use a pull max to do that we can roll this in with a, a special English wheel roller that will be narrow and then we can kind of walk around it a little bit and probably planish it pretty nice but uh, Rob did a really nice job on the panel he's got all the radiuses really close and what we did was when we made this panel, we also made the opposite side, the blank. So here's the blank for, is that, that's Jesse's panel here. That's the blank. So that's what Jesse started out with right there. And then he ended up with, with this piece here. So this is yet to be done on the other side. And Ed right now is finishing up the flexible shape pattern underneath here and I'm trying to get a goal of getting at least one quadrant of the car all shaped and hopefully maybe welded together. We've got uh, some of the the top of this hood section here and uh, Jesse also did that. That's going to go there and then the other section was being done by Brian and Brian also did these beautiful door skins. Brian from Virginia and he, he took the really good to it. He made these beautiful radiuses, showed him how to do that with the English wheel and bending it over a pipe and stuff, and did these beautiful tips on the, on the uh, tipping wheel. So these still need some edge tipping that hasn't happened yet. There's this one here. You can see that's going to look pretty slick. Now you see a lot of people on uh, YouTube or a Facebook or, or a website or whatever and you see their work and they have some really nice work. Now the, the thing is that what a lot of people don't understand is somebody that makes repetition parts, for instance if uh, Ed was going to make this uh, over and over and over again, he would reinforce this and you could use this as a hammer form buck. If this was made back at an Italian coach building firm back in the 50s and they expected maybe uh, the potential for selling 50 of these or so, this would all be made with like three inch thick hardwood. It could be maple, it could be oak, and it'd be almost full surface where all the complicated stuff was. And that enables you to uh, anneal the aluminum 
and it depends on what thickness they use too. If it was going to be a race car, sometimes they use as little as 40,000 thick or one millimeter thick for the, uh, for the skins because they really didn't care. They just wanted to make the shape and they wanted to be lightweight. Um, and oftentimes they made the skins out of 50. Uh, we've chose to use 60 thousand stick, it's actually 63 thousandths, and that gives you a greater dent resistance. It's a really, really strong panel. And a lot of these panels, there's very little uh, area change in them. You don't have to wheel them that much. Most of the detail is all in this tipping and stuff. So you have to have a good tipping wheel set up in order to do that. Now you can do it manually with little caulking tools and everything, but uh, the tipping wheel is probably the most efficient. But if they were doing this back in Italy, um, they would have a hardwood buck, they'd make a panel, and if they need this flare here, they would be able to hammer it in like this. So they use this as a hammer for them. So that's one technique, and that's probably the best technique as far as doing limited production uh, method. And that's, that was worldwide the way people did that. Uh, but uh, what you see in a lot of um, uh, pictures on Facebook and, 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 and uh, websites are these station bucks that are made out of plywood, MDF, or whatever. And if you have those, it doesn't have all this information. So I'm really not an advocate at all of that type of buck. But a lot of people fall into that trap. They get the CAD file and they make the thing and oh boy, you got a whole buck in less than a week or so. But you're going to be struggling for all this information. So uh, you have to come up with a plan. Ed chose to go this way. And he only did this because um, he, he really wanted to prove the design out so he could live with it for a while. He could put a layer of Bondo on it, sand it one night, come back the next day and say, oh boy, I got to go a quarter of an inch more. I don't like that line. So what he was doing, exactly what the designers do with the clay modelers when they, when they make these production cars, they have to clay model it up. So that's one of the big mysteries of uh, uh, making your own car body is what method to go. And a lot of people, it's, it's monkey see, monkey do. They, they see these wood station bucks and they go, oh, that's the way to do it. And then they find out it's not so easy doping out what you have to do to that panel to fit it on that wood station buck that you can't see the backside and it doesn't have all this detail. Now, uh, as everything has its drawback. Now, Ed's project, this is the actual surface. So we can't set the panels on here and hammer form them on here because it's one thickness removed. Plus, we don't have room to put the, the flanges all in. So if you had a situation where uh, it was the correct si uh, size so that you could hammer form on and then you would able to fit flanges down where they needed to go, then that would be the ideal. But it takes a lot of time to do a full surface buck like this. You might have saw that earlier video we did with Spencer who did the Gamund uh, uh, coupe and he doubted his ability to do a wire form so he went the route of routing out uh, all the, uh, the MDF stations and he came up here and tried to make some panels and we found all the shortcomings. So then he kind of integrated a wire form in here. Now he's integrated a Superleggera system in it too. But there were still shortcomings uh, because he didn't have the wires exactly where he needed them most. But I, I'm an advocate of the wire form and if you're going to do little details like this, you have to make an accommodation for that. You can use angle line or something so that it becomes a hammer form and you can, you can make sure that all these little details are right exactly where they're, they're supposed to be. Every situation is going to be determined by the actual design, how you're going to make that uh, buck. But uh, there's no easies, it's a lot of work, but it's a fun process. The process is as much fun as owning the car after you get it done. And if you get started, you'll see what I'm talking about. Because Ed's been, it's been a labor of love for Ed for a bunch of years. Now he's not working on it 40 hours a week, he goes out when he can. 
and, and um, he's got a big collection of alphas, and this is probably uh, going to be his most prized car once he gets it done. Absolutely. You know, so he'll have a modern drivetrain, alpha drivetrain in it and everything. It'll drive beautiful, and it'll be super appreciative of the whole process. So we made some really nice panels, and uh, Ed's staying here for a bunch of more days, and maybe extended, we don't know. And uh, we'll keep, he'll keep you up to date. And we'll follow up with the, the next video. we got a class coming up this weekend. We'll probably do a bunch more work on it. Hopefully get some of these panels welded together. And you'll see that this, this panel work that comes out of my class is as good as anywhere in the world. Uh, we do TIG welding. We don't have to do gas welding. We could gas weld it, but TIG welding is more realistic. And you watch some of my TIG welding videos. And remember, you know, I just don't have one video or whatever or two videos. I got 197 videos now. So go to my YouTube library on the Pro Shaper, and there's a wealth of information there. And sometimes you have to watch them a couple times before you really understand them. If you're considering taking a class, watching the video is uh, the best thing you can do because it really preps you for the class really well. Now this is a complicated craft and there's a lot of things you need to know and you never stop learning. So hope to see you at a class and uh, Ed's having a lot of fun here. He's become a one member of the shop and uh, he'll, be, he'll be here staying in here hopefully for two or three weeks. We'll see. <laughs> Depends on how his wife cuts him some slack. Uh, one more thing I just want to say. My daughter put out a new single. She's in her band is called Love Crumbs. Uh, check it out on YouTube. Just look on the Love Crumbs, and she's got two singles there. They're original music, and they're on Spotify, and put it in your uh, song list if you can. Right, I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to like, subscribe, and share, and leave us the comments. And uh, I think there's a little bell still or something you're supposed to hit, and that tells you when the new videos are coming in. And remember, metal is clay. It's Ray Shaleen from Pro Shaper Workshop in Charlton, Massachusetts. And I, I'm the guy that talks funny. <laughs>